Hey guys, welcome back to another P3D video. Today we're flying the United 737-900 and we are getting catering on board uh, for a flight from here in Las Vegas off to San Francisco. The flight time is now at 5 minutes and we're currently parked to Delta 54? I do want to say Delta 54, let me just double check. Why is my tail view? This view, that's weird. <laughs> um, Let's zoom out here, and we can see if it's Delta 54. It is Delta 54. I am correct. Right, <laughs> getting catering on board for this flight off to San Francisco. Let's go inside the cockpit. You can see we've got some lights flashing uh, from the jetway over there, which is clipping. Um, but <laughs> anyway, let's turn on the ground power, the battery. I should turn the battery, then the ground power. And ground power can be active there. And we'll align the IRSs like so. And we'll set this to heading status so we can see how long it'll take for the IRSs to align. Come back down here. We can go to the FMCs and uh, we'll go and set up the fuel and payload for our flight. So, fuel on board will be 5789, so almost 6 tons of fuel, just under. And none of fuel, no fuel in the center tanks. And for the payload, we are looking at a zero fuel weight of 59.8, like so. So 89% low level, 145 people in the coach class, <laughs> and it's 11 in the first class, apparently. Let's go and close up the catering doors, like so. And we're going to get boarding requested. So. We need to wait for this to come up. So we've got 156 people on board today. So, enter that in. Actually, I do want to see. Is it actually called tail view? When they go to this view, it is. Why is this the tail view? That's very odd. I'll change it. <laughs> Not now. Uh, some other time. So, we go over to the FMC. We're looking at 1907 latest nav database, which is correct. Go to the pause in it. We will tell the FMC we're at Vegas and we'll set the GPS left position into there. We could enter in Delta 54, but sometimes it doesn't, doesn't even... Yeah, there you go, not in database, so I'm not going to be bothered about that. Go to the route, put in the company route, so that is just Vegas, San Francisco, like so. Open L, entry forward. Yeah, I think I might have to double-click that. There you go. That's happy. United, uh, 8... Three, four is our call sign today. United eight three four, or United Airlines flight number eight three four, or something like that. Whatever. <laughs> Departure runway. We're looking at two six right. Currently, depending on winds, uh, Vegas always has these mad crosswinds. So um, two six right is typical. So it's going to be doing that for now. Wow, the cabin crew already got on the aircraft. That's amazing. So all the passengers coming on. Lovely, we've got a jetway, so we don't have to wait for for years uh, for the passengers to come on um, from the bus, so that's all good. Activate, well actually, you want to see our route, here it is. Our route is basically a star and a SID, or SID then star, and this is just the transition from those two uh, approaches, well, from the departure and the approach, so that's our route if you want to do it. <laughs> uh, we'll activate it and execute, if we go to the departure and arrival, here we go. Uh, we're departing at the 26 two uh, two right. We're doing the Shed 1 departure and we're transitioning at Keno. And then we go to the arrival because it's such a short flight. We're going to plan the arrival as well. And uh, we're doing the Diamd? Di di Diamd, <laughs> di I think. Diamd 5 arrival and uh, transitioning at Rosme. And we're expecting the RLS into 28 right. And uh, transitioning, actually, I don't know what we're going to be transitioning into there. So let me go and double check that. We down to five arrival. And I think it is going to be Archie. So we'll enter that in, like so. Execute that. And that's our whole flight plan done now. It's got six pages, so that's all good. In the ref page, double click the zero fuel weight. We can put the reserves in. Final reserve today is two. And the cost index that United use on the 737 is 35, because uh, we're flight duration less than four hours apparently. We're planning for our trip 
uh, to use up three tons of fuel, like so. So, maybe not. I'm still kind of confused. I think plan means because that gross weight changes, as you can see. I'm assuming we're planning 5.9, because and then our fuel on board is 5.9. I'm assuming this is before you start loading on your fuel. Because I've, I've always put the plan fuel as how much you're planning to use on your flight, not actually how much you have on your aircraft. I've just noticed that changing this does change the gross weight. And we've just got a ding from GSX, probably asking to open the cargo doors. So we're going to open those up. So I'm just going to put 5.9 like so, and hope for the best. But in fact, when I put three, which is what we're planning to do, is it's the same gross weight as what PFBX says. But I think PFBX is just a little bit wrong on that. So we'll just put 5.9 and hope for the best. Um, so we're going to be cruising today at, well, PFBX says 340. The real world flight cruises at 360. And it does say we can cruise at 360. So we're going to go for the 360 and not listen to PFBX, like so. Uh, sadly, PFBX is not connected to Atlas Sky. I don't know why. Um, so we don't know our cruise wind, um, which is quite annoying, but it doesn't matter too much. If we just go and override this uh, top of climb, top of cruise, on our cruise uh, altitude temperature, minus 56. It's already put it in there, but if we just double click it. Oh, I thought it was going to put in the ISA deviation. Uh, this is zero. Anyway. And that's fine, we'll execute it at 18,000 feet transition altitude, which is just to fall in the US. N1 limit. We are looking at, well, we're very light today. Uh, I do use QSIM planner to calculate the 737 takeoff. However, the QSIM planner does not do D rates. Um, so I'm just going to be lucky with this and do D rate of 2. And we're going to go to select temp of 30, uh, 30 degrees. And that'll bring our N1 down to 94 or 95 basically percent. Uh, apparently it wants to stay at climb, so we'll just leave that. Uh, but D rate 2. Flaps will be 5. Double click the CG, that'll put that in. And we'll go to the next page and we can enter in some stuff in here. So, the current runway wind at um, Los Angeles at McLaren International is. Did I say McLaren? McLaren? is uh, 150 at yeah, 8 knots and the runway slope which QSIM planner gives me is 0.8 like that it is dry and the acceleration altitude will be 1500 feet today so we're entering 1500 and engine out will be 800 as default so yeah the winds are 150 at 8 knots and we're departing out of uh, what 2 Two six, I think so. I think it's two six or two five, depending on the time of year or whatever. Because I think the heading of the runway is, I think it's yeah two five nine. Yeah, so it's two six zero for now. Anyway, because I think it says on the runway textures uh, on the uh, on the runway it says two five. I can't quite remember. I could be talking nonsense. So um, just <laughs> wait for the confirmation when we get to the runway. I guess you could say. But I mean. 1508 knots, the real world departed out to 26 uh, right, so we're going to do the same as the real world. Um, copycats, I guess you could say. Yeah, it's basically a crosswind. Um, it's a bit of a tailwind, actually, as well, but it kind of in the direction we want to fly, so it's a slight tailwind, so I think we're happy with that. So, we've already got our V speeds, but I think that might change when RS is aligned, so we won't actually input them just now. I'm just going to wait for a bit until IRSs have aligned. Let's go and test the oxygen, like so. And there we are. That's all good. So the Q&H in inches here in Vegas is 2987. So I'm going to set that. And that syncs across all these displays. Lovely. Current time is uh, oh, 20 to 4 UTC time. I don't, actually, I don't know what the um, conversion is, actually. Uh, first time... Uh, Las Vegas, so I'll uh, be right back and I'll just quickly double check. Well, as I was checking the time, GSX has just finished boarding and the RSs have aligned, and it is minus 7 UTC time, so it's 20 to 9 here in uh, Vegas. 
and it's blooming hot already. <laughs> 20, 20 to 9 in the morning, that is. Unable 290 it. That's fine. I'm just going to ignore that for now. So, yeah, we're going to close up these doors, close that door, go to the ground connections, and we'll start the forward left pump, and uh, we'll start the APU. Get the anti collision light on, and we'll get the MOC exit lights armed. I shouldn't have put those on, actually. Um, but it's fine, I'm not moving anywhere, so they're fine turning on now. If you believe can go on, and we'll get the packs on just for now, and I'd say should be able to auto. We'll get the window heats on, not the probe heats actually, in fact, we'll get the Peter covers off, and we'll get the probe heats on. And I'm just going to double check down here, you've got to go on, I don't I think that might just switch off, I can't remember. Uh, this can stay on the ground power for now. Uh, TR1 though, that can go on. And we're all good there. Come over the central tiny little one. We've just done that, actually, to be honest. We've just done that. Hydraulic pumps to stay off and chassis not needed. This is all good. Cockpit voice recorder. I'm not going to do any tests. That can go to both. Um, the fine auto. Reset fans also. That's an auto. And that's all good. 360. Oh. And the landing altitude is going to be, I don't know, so we'll just leave it for now and we'll do it in the cruise. <laughs> uh, which is fine. The yeah, only mass is until you start descending. Right. Uh, anti collision light is on because we have got the AP running and we're going to get pushback racing, which I'm going to request now. We're going to go nose left, so we're going to go and. Uh, I think we're going nose left. And we could go nose right and taxi back. And then around, but I want to taxi around the other side of the terminal, which seems kind of cool. I'm wondering if this jetway is going to move away, so what I'm going to do is tell it so to get rid of it, basically. I don't think GSX is talking to it. Right. Day, the, uh, VORs can go on, that can go down to 10, traffic minutes. on, can you data. That your break is VORs, terrain, del de delta, <laughs> data, 40, traffic, and we're good down there. Um, AP should be up and running now, so AP generator is on, and we'll get the AP generator there, and just click that to off, make sure everything's good before we actually remove the ground power, that all's all good. Right, we're going to set the parking brake, like so, remove all of the chocks, and that can go to the legs page on the FMC. Okay, that's all good, and GSX is going to do its stuff now. So. As we wait for GSX to do that, we're going to go to the V speeds. So V1 was 145, we're same for the rotating the speed, and then 152 for our well, V2. So we're going to enter in 152 in here. Flight director, auto throttle, flight director, VNAV, LNAV. The runway heading was given to us, it was 259. The tug is in position. So the set that. 259. And the initial okay, climb the uh, for this brakes. departure. I'm just going to wait. For, I don't actually have the initial climb up. Now uh, the departure ready for us, which is silly of me. Uh, but I can just check now, and it is what well, it says. One four zero. That's it. One four zero. It says top altitude of nineteen thousand, but initial climb is fourteen hundred feet. Not fourteen hundred. <laughs> it's one hundred forty hundred. But uh, 14,000. Okay, like anyway. Okay, GSX, just hold on your horses just for a moment. We'll get the engine, engine page already up. So we set up the whole FMC. We are actually good to push back. So overhead is all looking good. I'm going to remove the parking brake, like so. Pushing now. And Clear we should start. get the push back. So we're going to get the hydraulics on. We're going to get the fuel pumps all turned on. Anti collision light is already on, and we are going to start our engines. Going to turn off the packs though, so we can actually start the engines. AP bleeds on, so we can give the fuel, no, give the air to the engines. So we start the timer, like so, and we'll set ground on engine number two, and we should see it all come alive. Going to wait for N2 to reach 25%, and then we'll bring in the fuel. So uh, GSX is pushing us the correct way. And there's 20% N2. And there's 25 fuel coming in. In fact, we'll go to this little view here. And there we can watch the engine start up. It seems quite dark for what it is. Like, it's quite bright out there, but it seems quite dark. And also, oh wow. 
<laughs> on our departure, we should be flying similar to this aircraft's departure. Um, kind of. We're going to be hopefully seeing a bit of the, the Vega Strip. So, we'll see what our view is like. And we may be under a cloud, to be honest, because it is early in the morning. And the sun's going to be quite low down. I don't know where the sun is. Is it being rendered? <laughs> yeah, maybe. I don't know. Right, let's go and start number one. <laughs> Stop chatting. So, number one starting up. There we are. N2 is rising. Looking for 20%. In fact, I just remembered these might be nice to. Just for Take pilot preference. Clock and break set. And 24%, 25 fuels coming in. I was just wondering about the TCAS. I know we're not online, but. Online, when you're on VATSIM, I do recommend saying 2000, it's just the standard, and um, sometimes it's just easy for ATC to understand that you haven't been assigned a, um, well, a number, I guess you could say, for the TCAS, yeah. Anyway, the number, I've forgot, forgotten it is. I always have blanks when I want to, to record a video, and I guess I'm very annoyed. <laughs> so, engine should be started up, there we go, that's just clicked as soon as I say that. Gen 1 active. Gen 2 active, Gen 1 up there, and APU can, the compass light, the APU can turn off. So we get the packs back onto auto, the APU bleed can go off, and we'll click trip reset, because that messed something up there actually on the zone temp on the last time I flew the 737. The way to fix it, I just click the trip reset and it worked, so. Wait, is that like a light in there? It is. <laughs> just playing around with weird buttons, clicking all the buttons and... Never get in the air. Left and right. Disconnect. right. Now I have a Go to the system point. page. Actually, there is no like flight control check, so we'll just make sure everything's all free. So we'll just move all the axis like all the way. And that's looking all good. So we go full left on the rudder as well. And full right. And everything seems to be all good. GSX has a good trip, so thank you very much. The tax site can go on. And we'll set flats five. One, two, five. There we are, flats five is set. We'll go and release the parking brake and get taxiing. So let's bring a bit of power just to get us going. And we'll reduce the power so we've got going. And we'll break RTO as well. There we are. So let's go and taxi around. I think this is the inner taxi. There's a middle one and there's an outer one. There's, there's, there's like three taxiways. I was going to stick on the inner one for now. And then uh, we'll make our way over to 26 to right. I don't know how the taxi works at Vegas. I uh, have been here many times. Uh, I can probably obviously get the charts up to go and help me with that. Um, if I get the Navigraph charts up. And if I can see what it is. What's this called? South Tax Line. Uh, for wingspans, 100... I don't know. I can't read that. <laughs> anyway, 156 feet. Or is that inches? It can't be inches, can it? So 156 <laughs> feet wingspan or less. Should be taxiing where we're taxiing right now. And for the centre one, centre taxiway is 214 feet. Cool. So we're going to be taxi down here, and then I'll make our way on to, well, it's, it's called two on the charts. I'm not sure if it's, it's actually two. Um, so we'll make our way to two. <laughs> Which, no, that's just a stand number. We'll see where it is. It should be this one. Go take it right now. There we are. So we should be on <laughs> two, apparently. Yeah, then we make a left down Charlie. Um, yeah, that's weird. I don't know why it's called two. It's like one, two, three, four. Weird. Yeah, the second seems rather dark. I don't know why. Um, I mean, there, actually, the sun is there. There it is. It is behind a cloud, so maybe that's really the reason. Um, hopefully, it gets nice and bright once so we're. Well, not too bright once we're in the air. This is also pretty disarm. I saw that light's going to go off. There you go. Right, then I'll taxi past 20 knots. That should be good there. And we've got the TGAS to TARA down here. It's your TA only. And then TARA when we get to the runway. Because I think we're going to have it on once you're taxiing around in the US. Um, just just rules. Right, now we're past the terminals. We'll get the turn offs on. So no, no, see, no, there you go. Two. <laughs> Uh, in fact, we'll, we will pass Charlie, we're going to Bravo, because it'll just be easier for when we get to the uh, 26 right. 
you think it's in the aircraft on approach or on the runway, so we'll just still make a wave there. Like so. It's two six right, alpha three. Let's make the left turn. There are some views I need to reset in this aircraft. I'm definitely gonna do that in the cruise. Um, haven't flown the 900 in a while, so hopefully I do remember and remind myself actually there's an aircraft there. All oh, these uh, textures nil. Yeah, it could be like that in the real world. But it looks really odd in the textures there. There's an aircraft on approach, but hopefully it's 26 left. Don't know yet. We'll have to just go over there and see what we're dealing with. Okay. It's not palm trees, isn't it? Yeah. These, these are, this airport is highly detailed, I mean, and the city as well, as you can see. Uh, I don't want to try and name any buildings, because I haven't been to Vegas, and I don't learn about Vegas, if that makes sense. So, I'm going to try and tell you all the buildings. But, most of the strip and the airport is basically, like, done. As well, actually, just everywhere in Vegas is just completely de highly detailed, so... It's absolutely amazing. So we're going to go all the way to Bravo. Uh, well, we're on Bravo. We're going to go all the way to the end of Bravo, which will take us to 26 right. It literally ends at 26 right, so... We'll go there. I think that's landing 26 left, that little dot in the background. There it is. So, hope for the best for that. Then we go above 25 knots. That'll be good there. Okay. So this should be Bravo 1 or something. Uh, it's Bravo something. Bravo 1, yeah. So that's Bravo 1. Um, and then Bravo's right at the end. I mean, if you want to go Bravo, you get the extra couple of meters for your takeoff roll, but we should be fine. And I'm hoping with the assumed D rates, uh, we haven't actually calculated the D rates, but we're going to assume, because uh, how light we are, we should be able to get away with these D rates. We are quite high up as well, so let's just hope for the best. I guess you could say. Um, right. Ah, so this is your entrance to 26 left, apparently. Ah. Well, this said 26 left on the. So it's 26. I'm confused. It says both runways. Uh, see, that's landing 26 left for sure. So we'll go and line up on the 26 right. And, uh, yeah, maybe you taxi 26 left via this. I don't know. I'm just confused now. Um, <laughs> Right, we'll get the strobes on, and the lights taxi off, and I'll set continuous all over there. I don't know where the red eye can go on. Yeah, it is saying it's traffic, uh, but we'll just line up and wait. And TA RA. There it is, landing. We're all good to go, so we'll start the timer. No, we're not good to go, actually. I keep doing this in the 737. Like, I'm never, ever going to be remembering this. Um, like, I don't think I've ever done this in my life, like, I remember to do this, uh, trim 5.5, basically. There we are. Ah, oh, happy. Oh, don't want to type anything now, man. Cool. Okay, now let's go. So, starting the timer, about 50%, there we go. Make sure everything's stable as it rises up to that. There we are, that's all good. Hit toga, and off we go. It's quite dry here in Vegas, so no amazing immersions. SP's alive. Light directors has come alive as well. And 80 knots. Thrust hold. Thrust is set, actually. I should have said it earlier, but whatever. 94%. Oh, hello. There's some glitching going on in the background of the scenery. And yeah, I'm, ha I'm definitely happy with this V rate setting on the rotate. Oh, wow, that rotated super fast. Didn't mean to do that. Gear up. <laughs> I was slowly rotating with the, the yoke then. Um, and I was like, oh, this isn't going anywhere. So I just pulled back too much. <laughs> there we are. So yeah, we do go a bit down the south sort of direction to start off with on this departure. Um, yeah, and then we should be going up north again, so it's a weird departure. I wonder if we would skip it in the real world. I don't know. And there's Vegas to the right, 
I kind of want to get the autopilot just, just turned on for now, so I can just go and see it. There you go. There's the strip. That looks amazing. All PBR textures as well. All PBR. There you go, now it's nice and bright, the aircraft as we're out of the clouds. Anyway, out of the clouds shadow. Zoom out on there. Zoom out a bit there as well. And yeah, the uh, FPS isn't great. It, I mean, it's, it's a highly detailed area. Um, but the FPS you get for this highly detailed area is amazing. So I do recommend this scenery if you're thinking about buying it. We are going to do some directs because we are flying, and I guess we could, I guess you could say we're the, the boss. Uh, so we're going to go direct to D Biggie, uh, which is that waypoint over there. But oh, no, I didn't mean to do that. I need to click the last page, like so, and the aircraft's going to instantly go right again, and it's going to get really confused, and flats can go up now. <laughs> also, break off. There we go. Oh, that was a, bit of a shake there. Right, we're well, going to sort of head that direction. And flaps, yeah, there is some scenery glitching. I don't know if you can see it flashing. If you missed it, just roll back in the video if you want, but that's weird. Yeah, 250 knots coming up there. Cool. That can go to the legs page, and that should be. That shouldn't be um, a discontinuity there. So I should have just filled that in, but it's fine. There we are. Zoom out like so. There we are. Wonderful. We are climbing super duper fast. We'll turn the gear off. It's all up, so hydraulics for that can just go off and release the pressure. That heading can reset to the aircraft heading. There we are. Up we go. Here we come, San Francisco. Bye bye, Vegas. It's such a large scenery. Look at all the textures needs to load. Allow me. There we are. <laughs> right, aircraft's going mental. <laughs> Five thousand feet per minute. Allow me. Uh, there's ten thousand lights coming off. That can go off, and we are happy. I'm gonna go up to the cruise altitude of three six zero. Set it. In fact, three six zero. There we are. That's going to climb all the way. Yeah, over the mountains, we're about to go. Uh, you can see, like, everything's. Some bits are just flashing, which is pretty weird. Very weird. Um, hopefully, that doesn't happen further on in the flight. Uh, and the mesh. I think it's just because the mesh is, like, changing as soon as we're getting closer to it. That's very weird. Then you can see it. There we go. There you see that? The mesh. Where. If you don't know meshes, it's just like telling the scenery what height it is above sea level. So and it's changing when you get closer to it, which is really weird. And I think that is causing the scenery flashes because the texture is trying to like get used to this new <laughs> mesh resolution. Weird. Hey ho. Um, so yeah, we're past ten thousand feet now, so we're going to climb super fast. Uh, well at free speed, I guess you could say. Uh, not super fast, but you get what I mean. There's all just uh, above altitudes for now, so that should be fine. And we're all good for the rest of the flight. So, I hope you guys enjoyed. I just need to set standard pressure and turn off the seatbelts. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the departure. I'll see you in the arrival into San Francisco. Enjoy the cinematics. I'm going to fix some views, like this tail view, which is obviously not a tail view. It's kind of a nice view, but it's not a tail view. I might keep this view, but I'm not going to say it's a tail view. <laughs> but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the departure. I'll see you in the right one to San Francisco. Bye-bye.
Hey guys, welcome back into the descent into San Francisco. We've been flying for 50 minutes now. Uh, we are in descent. We are coming in the descent quite one well, back in the video quite late than normal. Uh, not because it's like a long arrival. I mean, apparently, according to this FMC, uh, we're going to be landing in 13 minutes or 14 minutes. So not too long till the arrival. Uh, we're on the star, the arrival that we previously planned. Uh, the weird one, I can't say, the Diamond, <laughs> Diamond 5 arrival, uh, on the arrival into 28 right, the ILS 28 right. So the current Q&H is, because we already passed 180, uh, I had to set the Q&H, and it is 3000 in inches, that is. And San Francisco is a bit cooler than Las Vegas, it's 16 degrees there, and the surface winds are 260 and 11 knots. We we'll go to the NRF page. We're going to enter in flaps 30 at 148, like so. And you can see all these uh, digits here. I'm just going to import them in uh, to up here. So the course is 284. So we set 284 in there, and the same on this side. And 111.7. Going to enter into 111. Point seven and go into here. So this is our ILS frequency uh, for the landing into 28 right. And that's all entered in. And that's all sorted. So you can see we've got the little dots coming up ready for the low plans and glide slope. Wonderful. So I think this arrival gets you less and lower, then it's then it starts to slow down at sort of a descent rate. And uh, then we'll be on the ILS somewhere about here, I want I expect. Sem. I'd uh, say that way, it's all mixed up with everything. Seppin, uh, I think we should be on the arrival by then. Um, so, yeah. So, you see, it's all above altitudes from now on, basically. Actually, this is 12,000, between 10,000 and 12,000. This is at 7,000, it's Archie. Um, but, yeah, basically, it's 1,000 increments all the way down, basically. It's the RLS. Uh, I've got a bit more trees now. Um, I've got a bit more of a desert. <laughs> In the cruise, we've got we've got some nice uh, nice greenery now, which is awesome. So we're gonna fly over these like hilly areas, and then we should uh, make our way over to San Francisco. Uh, that should be nice. Um, minimums for two eight right. I don't know. I uh, don't have the charts up, so let me go and open up the charts, and actually not be lazy and find out what it actually is, because this is the way I am. No, it's not. I'm just, I've just been lazy today. Um, right. <laughs> Cat 1 is basically the type of RLS we're doing, and that will give us a barrow of 213. So 213, like so. That's set. So that is 230. Ooh, we need to descend even further. We'll go down to about. Okay, we'll initially set the go around altitude, uh, which is. 3,000. We should be on the RLS by then. So set 3,000 for the go around altitude. And the aircraft needs us to uh, decelerate down to 250 knots because we are about to pass 10,000 feet. Um, so that's just going to slow down there. And then once it's got down to 250 knots, it should descend past um, 10,000 feet. I'm going to bring out some spirit just to help the aircraft slow down. And yeah, I have fixed the views in the de in the cli uh, in the cruise, like the third time lucky, like <laughs> descent climb cruise. Um, so yeah, all my views are fixed, tail is fixed. And I said I was going to keep the view that was like to the side. Uh, I totally forgot about that, so. And yeah, now it's like gone, so. Hey ho. There we are, we're below 250 knots now, so I'm going to release the speed brake. And I'm kind of, I'm just going to make sure that it's not. Oh, what have I just done? There we go. Get back on the main path. There we are. I don't know, that's why I clicked out to you into bed. Did I click something else? I may have clicked uh, vertical speed actually. I don't know what I clicked. But I, just, oh, I clicked altitude into bean. Because uh, I thought it was just going to hold at 10,000 feet because we forgot to um, change the altitude uh, fast enough. So what I'm going to quickly do is just set this 8,000 and above again. So, everyone's happy. Cool. This may uh, change the speed down here. This could change. 
as we uh, use fuel. We've got 2.8 tons of fuel on board right now, uh, 1.4 on each tank. So, got quite heavy actually. So, what we're going to do is Ultimate 2. And the reason is not because it's a short runway, uh, but well, we've got a bit of fuel on board, almost 3 tons of fuel. So, what we're going to do is um, use Ultimate 2 because not only are we heavy, we want to slow down quite a bit because it's about two thirds of the way down the runway is where we really want to vacate because that's where we're going to be um, parking up. I uh, don't know where the real world parks actually, so I'm just going to double check where it roughly parks. Yeah, basically around two thirds of the runway down, we, we kind of want to vacate. Um, so that's what we're going to be doing. Uh, so you can see the sea. Or is it a sea? Yeah, it's a river. It's not a river. These are rivers. This is a sea. Um, and we're going to be flying over that for quite a bit. I can't really see it on these displays, this terrain display yet. Um, but you'll be able to see it soon. And uh, then we should be uh, on the RS into 28 right. However, obviously we can't see anything. There's clouds in the way. It's cloudy right now at San Francisco. Which is annoying. I prefer to stay at uh, Vegas and uh, stay in the casinos, but got to fly over to San Francisco, hopefully we can fly back to Vegas. Um, I don't know if Vegas is this uh, aircraft base, I don't know how it works actually to, to be honest. In the US, with base airports, the 73s, or just United in general. Anyway, so we're going to right turn, and you can see, yeah, so at Dumba we should be on the RLS, uh, 2 rate right, there you go, Dumba we should be uh, all aligned up. Lovely. So I'm gonna reset this heading to roughly about there. That should be where we're gonna be sort of ending up. That seems good. So the center is gonna really cut down now, it's gonna be six thousand or above uh, this next waypoint, which is in about two miles, two point two miles. Uh it just says there actually. So the center rate's uh, okay, one thousand for two hundred is not bad. I mean it's kind of this is flashing, it's annoying. Drag is required. Uh, is there a speed restriction? No, so aircraft, don't worry about that. I'm going to speed into Bean and just keep it up at 240 because the descent rate is going to be quite low. It's fine doing that. So, the yeah, outside views once again. I don't know uh, if anyone's got um, the Orbex North and South uh, California. That would be nice. Um, if you guys have it and give me like a recommendation if I should get it. I was on F uh, FMS, <laughs> FPS, sorry, because um, I think I might I might want to get it. So I love San Francisco flying into there. And I thought it might be good to get some a bit more detailed um, scenery near the near the airport, I guess. So if you guys own it, please let me know. Maybe uh, that'd be nice. Don't get it just so you can let me know because we yeah, have already have it. Um, is it good for commercial or do you just use it for VFR, for example? Anyway, almost hitting the one hour mark, so we're looking good on the one hour, five minute flight time. So, not too bad there, not too shabby. We can see our the current distance from the runway now, so we're 18 miles uh, from the runway. And by 12 miles out, we should be slowed right down to a speed. 180 knots. There's an aircraft flying towards us. Oh, did it just go off the radar? Or is it like suddenly turned? Yeah, it probably went off the radar. Cause it's, oh, it's probably this aircraft there. It's probably it's gone a bit higher altitude. There's the right turn. We should be on the localizer now. Oh, catching it very soon. And we'll go down to a speed of 220 knots, like so. There we are, there's the localizer. And we're going to actually get the approach armed. Like so. And the aircraft will just will descend, and it might hold at a certain altitude at 3,000, descending down to, and it'll hold at that altitude. Hopefully, grab the light glide so and get the aircraft to decelerate. But I'm going to do that with the speed brake. And there's 15 miles. Cool. Right. We could just put it into vertical speed to be honest, and just slow down, slow this down. And now I'll just grab the glide slope. So. Do it like that, there we go. And we'll set this heading to 284. Awesome. Single channel, that's fine. 
because we're not going to be auto landing this hopefully if these clouds aren't too low uh, it does say the clouds are 900 feet but that isn't actually too low because we can keep it in the autopilot down to 900 feet take it out before the minimums hopefully uh, basically if we can have it uh, have the autopilot taken out by minimums or before minimums that's what we're looking for so descend us right past 3,000 feet that is actually 12 miles I did lie uh, Maybe at 280 knots. I did lie. I just didn't, didn't lie. I said I was going to be at 180 knots by 12 miles, but I lied because I wasn't. There we go. That didn't make sense to me when I first said that. <laughs> right. Um, landing lights. Yeah, whoopsies. I forgot about that. Um, that never happened. Continuous on the end of speed. So we go. So everything's continuous. Landing lights are on. And wow, it's like as foggy it is here in the UK sometimes. <laughs> right, we're looking at what, 148? So we're looking at an approach speed of 153. We've got quite strong headwinds, but it's not too, uh, I want to say, unstable. So 153, uh, we will set now. Just the aircraft, just slowly just get down to that speed. Get rid of the speed brake and arm it. Gonna bring the gear down. It's so eight miles out now. See gear coming down. I'll just increase some drag and we'll set flats 5, flats 10. I wanted to get flats 5 earlier, but I never actually got to it because I realised the landing lights weren't actually turned on. It's not, it's not, it's not bad actually, but it's a standard procedure at 10,000. Uh, flats 15. Yeah, I'm going to try and get fully configured nice and early. Uh, flats 25. And flaps 30. So yeah, I can see the pappies, but. Obviously, I have no sight of the actual runway, um, so I'm just going to just keep it like this for now. Until we can actually see the runway, I'll bring the autopilot out. Hopefully, that is before minimums. There we are. So, yeah, Speedworks is armed. Flaps are 30, auto brake 2. Seatbelt signs did not forget, though. They are on, and actually, the only answer I did forget. Uh, should, like I said, you should normally just set that up when you're at your departure airport, but hey ho. Um, yeah, 153, we're all stable, just waiting for a visual, the runway, and wow, as soon as I say that, we have visual. So, autopilot's coming off, and same with the auto throttle. Everything is mine. I sound like an evil person then. Cool. Not really going to touch anything though. Just hang the autopilot off. I'm just going to keep it nice and stable. Uh, maybe just use the trim or the power just to adjust slight movements. Let's see, I do want to go to the left a bit and descend a bit further. So reduce the thrust, trim down a bit. It should be good. Oh, hello. I don't like it that I don't know why I don't know why it does it. Axis Sky or Rex Sky Force 3D or Rex Environment Force is changing like. The amount of clouds that are in the sim, like instantly. It's not like a slow transition, which is really annoying. But hey ho. Continuing. Right, I'm gonna basically, it's my aircraft from now on. Here we are. Call cool, us, help us. Oh, next bike. And the idle throttle. Try not to float the aircraft though. Oh wow, I did that and I just floated it. Wow, sorry. And bring out some reverses. So try not to float it. And I float it. <laughs> I thought the reverses out then. But I didn't. I wanted to be a gate left then, but hey yeah. Take the next exit. 60 knots. Reverses in. And no braking. And you'll try and be gate left. I'm not trying to use too much of brakes. There we are. Where well, they're off. Oh, and yeah, the clouds have suddenly come back. Very realistic. Um, right, spoilers in. Let's be breaking and the flaps up. There we are, let's break and come off. Cool. Uh, we're basically just going to go over here, I think. And let's double check what terminal the real world part at. Part to terminal 3. So we're going to park at what, terminal 3. Well, the F stands, F gates. Um, so we'll go over there. Fat. 
We need to turn off these landing lights. This can go off. Keep the strobes on because we are crossing a runway. Make sure nothing's taking off or landing. And yeah, so F or Foxtrot. Is it all available soon? 81. That's around the back there. Don't really want to go to those ones. 87. Will that do? Um, no, it's still around the back. All the ones are taken around the front. So. Um, we'll go F F90 then. Foxtrot 90. And we'll go United. It's a bigger stand, but everything else is taken up by AI. So we'll go for that one. Okay. We're going to T8 only. I mean, it's already set in, in this Dana XC. T8 only, but hey ho. Yeah, sorry, I didn't stop the timer then. One hour, five minutes. So this is bang on what PFPX calculated. I stopped it. What well, bang on what PFPX calculated. Right, we're off the runway, so strobes off to steady. Um, so yeah, we're going to taxi just past this, you know, 787. Did it say all the Fox Shot sounds are taken? What sounds that? That's not a Fox Shot standard, is it? What is it? I don't know what that is. I said those are taken. It's just lie to me. Anyway. <laughs> we'll take a left via Quebec. We'll clear these off because I don't want this annoying thing coming up on the display there. Maybe don't lie to me. Maybe we'll just skip past those stands without me knowing. Yeah, you can just see we're just past this United A320 in the old livery. And then you can just see it past there, so turn off can go off now. Ah, APU should start up in time. Should start up in time, hopefully. Try not to taxi too fast around corners. 10 knots should be our taxi speed around the corner. There we are. Yeah, so it's going to park in between this ERJ. I think it's an ERJ and the Airbus. So the Boeing is sandwiched between the, um, well, I think it's the RJ and the Airbus. Lovely. Right, let's give up a bit more power again. Get us moving. Oh, wow, we got that sort of jetway. Wonderful. I'm going to have to look outside for this because that will never be correct. Right, here we are. Take a left turn in. The door will never line up. I don't look outside, so the marshal never gets it correct. And the two guests are now going to just stand by. Here we are, Fox Shot 90. And like I said, I'll go outside just for this. I'm going to get a steady speed actually. I'm going to line up inside the cockpit. Then we'll just go outside for the last bit. Just get us all lined up with the door or the jetway. The door and the jetway lined up. There we go. Okay, right. Let's go outside. Going a bit too fast there. And yeah. I'll stop there. That, uh, I'll creep a bit forward. We'll creep a little bit forward. And yeah, you can see that's nowhere near on any of these lines. <laughs> um, is there a 737 position? Yeah, there's 737s there. And obviously you can't adjust. So, AP generator's on. I told you they'll start up in time. Park brick on. AP gen TR1. Engines, bye bye. And we'll keep the left forward tank on, but we'll turn on all the others. And the hydro pumps can go off. Seatbelt signs can go off. And cushion light off. Request deep boarding. And I've forgotten how many people are on the aircraft, so let's go double check. I wish it saved your last entry. Uh, oh, yeah, 156. And we'll get the jetway over. Yay, so the jetway is recognized, so we're going to bring that over. Now, I think it's my first time in using a nose loader actually. Yeah. San Francisco, so that's nice. We will go and connect up some wheel jocks and uh, ground power. Ground power active, if you can actually go off, your pump's off now. Ground power, and I'll get the air conditioning unit, not the start unit, just the air conditioning unit. And the AP bleed actually can stay off anyway. There we are. Probably it's to stay on the window heats still on. I think we're all good. All good to, yeah, that's all good. In fact, the door needs to be open so passengers can get off. Now we're good. So, I didn't stop the timer. Okay, baggage handling is complete. 100, 120 minutes? Wow. 
80 minutes. I'm well, now in 20 minutes. There we are. Um, so yeah, welcome to San Francisco. Sorry about that little cloud glitch. I get that every now and then. I don't know why. Um, the clouds is like, I want to say despawn or de-rendered, unrendered. I don't know what the exact uh, wording is or grammar. Um, and then they come back, which is really weird and I don't know why it does that. But other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And the 737-900. It's been a while since the last flown this. And there's people's heads just popping outside the jetway. Lovely. Um, yeah, it's been it's been good fun flying this aircraft. So sorry about the little floater. I did say I was trying not to float it, but I did float it in the end. But it was a it was a smooth landing of minus forty nine feet per minute. So um, it cancels out, I guess, the landing rate and the float. <laughs> I guess you could say. Anyway, so yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the video and the flight. I'll see you next time, and bye bye for now.